I remember the day we got the phone call at Entertainment Tonight um, requesting that I come and sit down with Annette because she had a big announcement to make. And of course, we knew what that announcement was before I went to her home. And here she was in her mid-40s revealing that she had a disease everybody dreaded to hear about, multiple sclerosis. You know, in those days, in, in the 80s, people were not very comfortable um, talking about diseases that they had, whether it was cancer, MS, MD, you name it. People just were not open about it. So going into Annette's home that day was incredibly moving. Uh, you know, I, like everybody else of my generation, had grown up watching her, and she was this, this bouncy, adorable kid, along with Frankie Avalon and Paul Anka, that whole generation, older than me, but as a younger kid, I, uh, you know, I loved watching them, and there was something about her spirit, her sweetness and approachability that I think everybody fell in love with. And when I walked into her house that day to hear this sad news, she was still that same person. She was upbeat, she was positive, she wasn't going to let this disease beat her down. And that came through. She didn't really want people's sympathy. She had tried to keep this a secret and had in fact done that for a number of years. She had been diagnosed in the late 80s. But it wasn't until she told me in that interview, she said she had gone out to dinner with her husband and her family a few times and her gait, her walk was quite unsteady. And she said, I'm afraid that people might have perceived that I was drunk, that I was having a hard time walking right. And she said, I can understand where it looked that, looked that way to them. And I just, I just want everybody to know that wasn't the issue. The issue is that I have MS. And for her to sit there very courageously and confidently and talk about it was something we all admired. And subsequent to that, I had the opportunity to go back with letters of encouragement and love from her fans. I did that a couple of times later that first year, and then a few years later when she really had deteriorated, her speech was coming very difficult to her in the late 90s. Dear Annette, by the way, rules one. I mean, number one, we can't cry, okay? No tears. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dear Annette, I remember watching the Mickey Mouse Club every day. I really enjoyed it because it was entertaining, there was always something different. I have fond memories of that show and I would like you to know it brightens many of my, brightened many of my childhood days. However, as an adult, I admire you. You have shown spirit, courage, and strength. As a child, you entertained us. But as an adult, you inspire us. I'm breaking my own rule. <laughs> I wish you the best, oh. God bless. And yet, she had that same spirit. It was, I'm fighting this, I'm fighting this with everything that I have, and I love all of your letters of encouragement because it meant a lot to her to know that she had legions of fans out there who were pulling for her, praying for her, sending positive thoughts and wishes. Is there anything you'd like to just look into the camera and say uh -huh. to everybody, Annette? Tell yeah. what you say. You know, thank you, everybody in this world. You've been so loyal, and it's overwhelming. Thank you. Thank you.